Awesome. Uh, I have to ask, um, this is a question I, I tend to ask some of my guests, and you seem like a pretty interest, you know, interesting person, especially looking at your profile picture that says fight the system. So this is about El Salvador. Um, you are aware that um, you know, PTC has you know, come to stay in, in El Salvador, but there is the law that you know, mandates you know, the citizens of El Salvador to, El Salvador to actually you know, accept Bitcoin or face jail time, accept Bitcoin when offered. So how would you see the adoption of Bitcoin in, Salvador, in El Salvador, especially when you consider that you know, the government is um, basically you know, and, you know, forcing Bitcoin, although many of them might be happy about it, but it's, you know, as a matter of you know, fact, they're actually forcing you know, people to actually accept Bitcoin when offered. How would you, you know, this for someone like you who I assume, you know, is pretty much, you know, um, when I say a rebel, government rebel, um, how how do you feel about that? You know, is it a net positive for Bitcoin or what in a broader sense, or it's a no-no for you? Um, that's a very interesting question. Um, I've been thinking about it and I dug deeper into that uh, law that they had, and apparently you're not forced. Um, to accept it um, if you don't have access to internet or technology. So basically, from what I understood, and I think this is my understanding of it, is that you don't have to accept it if you don't have these things. Like, you can always say, well, I don't have access to internet, I don't have access to technology. Um, you know, my parents are in the retail business, and I often think uh, of this because when the credit cards arrive, they try to force it on them. Like it is required by law for you to use it. And they were always stressing around, you know, small business, you know, every cent for them counts basically. Um, they are, don't have workers trained. Like how do we do this? Like what is this terminal thing? And then they added like some fiscalization, they call it uh, this year, like, you know, improving the, you know, reducing the gray economy by basically state being able to have access into everything that you do at your store. So anything that forces uh, people to do stuff, I'm not a fan of it. But at the same time, um, I've, I think that uh, it was maybe needed in order for Bitcoin to thrive in a way. Uh, so I try to look at it from these people perspective. They may not understand this technology at first, but what I'm really hoping for is that they will be able to save in Bitcoin and that eventually over the years it will actually be beneficial for them because yeah uh if we have like uh them saving in bitcoin then bitcoin price going up or you know just just remaining stable would be good um it would be like quite a big thing for them so uh i don't know i i've been thinking about it i'm not sure do you have any like view on, on it jerry because i'm trying to think like am i am i a fan of it or not as a Bitcoiner, I love it, but then like, yeah, as a rebel, as you say, it's really not my cup of tea when state tries to enforce anything to people. Um, I think we're pretty much in the same boat because um, I haven't made up my mind as to whether, you know, it's good or bad I, because, but number go up and it's a good thing. But, you know, we, we it, it kind of makes us, makes us, you know, hypocrites because we can't, you know, keep saying, you know, get, you know, Keep government out of you know money, separate money from you know from the state, and at the same time you know keep cheering what El Salvador is doing. So uh, really, it's I mean among amongst the, you know the three of us, um, it's we personally I don't know, man, I really don't know. What do you think, Ricardo? I'm kind of skeptical about the Chivo wallet. I've heard some some shady things about how Chivo wallet is engineered to like spy on who your contacts are and and basically be like a tool for financial surveillance for the state. And um, the majority of people that are using Bitcoin in El Salvador are using the state uh, sponsored Chivo wallet. So I think it would probably be a better decision as a Bitcoiner in El Salvador to use an open source wallet rather than the uh, state spyware wallet. I guess when it comes to the the law, um, does it I get does it come down to like an ethical discussion of like, hey, to you, do the means justify the end or do they not kind of thing, right? I, I, th I feel like that's kind of like a, a big part to play in it. Like, are you, are, and I think everyone differs, but like, are you someone who says, hey, the means justify the end? Or are you someone that's like, you know, no, like, you know, yeah, sure, it can be a noble goal, but we've got to get there in a noble fashion too. Um, so I guess that's like everyone's question to answer, right? Like, do you, are you happy with the way, are you, are you happy as long as, you know, everyone is, it's kind of that thing. It's like, you know, if everyone's free and we're living in this great utopia, but to get there, 
you know, some stuff has to happen where some people get forced to use something and maybe, you know, they might lose some money or, you know, end up buying, but not really understanding Bitcoin and getting conned or all these kinds of things. Um, that may happen. Is it a means to justify the end situation or is it a that's still wrong situation? And I guess, it, um, yeah, it just depends, I guess, on your personal views, doesn't it, on that one? Not sure. I don't, know. I don't think any of us can say wholeheartedly, like, yeah, massive fan this of this of this thing they're doing yeah i mean are have you guys uh been to el salvador or are you would you know have goals to go there in the near future because i'm trying to maybe in november go for a month and i one of my missions there will be probably just try to talk to people because i'm not a fan of you know them using a state controlled wallet and maybe just by talking to them explaining them that there are maybe even easier things to use or just figuring out how we as uh, builders can help uh, develop software for them that will uh, you know, enable them to separate their funds from the state funds. And in my view, as long as a regular citizen are able to acquire Bitcoin and store it in a you know, safe way uh, and have more Bitcoin than their state does, that's a better you know, uh, way of, uh, yeah, that's just better for me to, you know, that, that, people having more uh, Bitcoin than state should be <laughs> always the goal. And yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, at the end of the day, I guess uh, it is also on us, on applications, builders to just uh, see how we can do things better. Because yeah, maybe Chivo is good because it is in Spanish and it explains some things that we aren't aware of. So just by, by going there, I think it is very beneficial. And I, I've seen like quite a lot of... Uh, you know, uh, open source developers going to El Salvador for the same reason, just, you know, see how it all happens in the wild and, you know, how people are using BTC on, on streets. So I think that is very uh, important because you cannot develop applications without getting to know users and target audience and, you know, trying to, you know, that's one of the problems with open source as well. Like we all develop things behind our monitors. It is awesome. But yeah, when real people start using it, your entire vision in most cases collapses and you have to do adjustments and improve software. So I think that situation, I, overall, I think El Salvador will be great case study, at least for most of us on, you know, what shouldn't or should be done basically and uh, what kind of products we should do and what kind of, you know, do we really want to give politicians th that much control? Do we really even want Bitcoin, you know, politicians to have Bitcoin or to give them access to our community, to smart people? Like, do we need to ban them in a way we don't talk to politicians? Like we, I personally always am suspicious of them. I don't trust any politician ever. They all do what they do for their interest, of course. And yeah. But then you listen to El Salvador president who is talking about things and you're like, wow, this guy either had some people who really educated him properly because he's talking about all of these things and it is the only politician at this point that really talks to me. So I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. But yeah, going there on the streets would be, I guess, uh, way better and seeing if people are really happy about it. Are they really using BTC? Are they saving or is it propaganda? Like, yeah, those don't, th sorts of things are dragging me into El Salvador, I guess. Yeah, planning to visit myself uh, potentially in November as well for the uh, Adopting BTC Summit. Um, yeah, I think uh, you made a good point. Like, I don't necessarily trust politicians either. Um, and I think I think what um, Bukele has done in El Salvador is, is a very risky thing um, because if you think about politics, it's a very... It's often a very short-term game. Like people really remember the last like year or two of your presidency before they're then going to vote you in or out, right? Um, and so, from his perspective, like if, if he does all this and Bitcoin just happens to have a, a down couple of years in price or whatever, like it did do for the last sort of bear market, um, then he's running. Like, you know, from a from a perspective of like an ordinary person just in El Salvador, he's running a pretty big risk because it could be like, well, you've put all of our money into this and it's halved in value. I don't really get what Bitcoin's about anyway screw you and i can definitely see that as a huge risk like from his perspective so um whereas if it goes up and doubles then you know he's the savior of el salvador so it's very it's a very big risk that i think he's taken to be honest um from a politician standpoint if i'm trying to be super you know like non-judgmental uh, as like a person who doesn't necessarily like politicians um so yeah i don't know i guess we'll see We'll see. But I think you're right. It's good to get out there if you can. And obviously, I know a lot of people can't, COVID, financials, whatever. But it's good to get out there if you can and, and see it for real. And, and uh, if we do get out there, hopefully we can do some podcasts from there or something like that and maybe uh, interview some people. Yeah, sure. That that would really be awesome. I, I agree with that stand as well. Like, 
Uh, yeah, uh, price will probably be the biggest factor of, uh, you know, quote, success of it there. But also like lots of tourism is being developed at this point. Lots of smart people go there. Lots of people are going to build companies there because of some, you know, regulations that now they have for, you know, Bitcoin companies, as far as I'm aware, and I'm not like following it very closely, but there are like some either no taxes or things like that there that are allowing people who are really smart all over the internet to go just go there and, you know, live there, help uh, improve, uh, you know, the El Salvador. And I mean, what we've done even with uh, Bitcoin Smiles is just awesome because if there wasn't for this i i assume we would never do it in el salvador anyway so it's getting a lot of uh, attention to the country and but it can as well turn bad so it really just help, comes down to what will people value it more is it like a short-term loss or short-term gain or are they going to look at it from the perspective hey we have lots of people from around the world helping our country, you know, being the residents right now, paying taxes on, you know, properties or whatever in, in our country and helping us uh, become a more developed country. Because if I look at it from that way, I really wish that I lived in a country where a president uh, have, you know, is that forward thinking and is attracting. In our country, they are like uh, doing taxes. If you're doing IT work, they're like taxing you like crazy because they, hey, this guy do, does IT work and IT, he's probably making a lot of money. So let's, you know, tax the heck out of him. So that is how they approach it here. Whereas, you know, in El Salvador, they're inviting all these people from all over the, you know, place to go there and try to, you know, improve, improve it. So, yeah, I guess it depends of if you're looking from it from a long or short term pers perspective. But knowing people, uh, yeah, it will probably just boil down to the price. Hopefully, it won't. But probably the next. I had one one last question because I know we're getting close to an hour. But um, when the El Salvador law was about to pass, did BTC Pay notice an uptick of like Spanish speaking interest for uh, uh, like El Salvadorian businesses? Uh, considering BTC pay like as a solution for accepting Bitcoin? Yes, yes, we did. Um, however, you know, we don't have like marketing departments. We don't have lobbies that go in El Salvador. We just weren't ready as a community to, you know, go there. And basically it all happened so fast that companies that were fast, they had like, you know, even funding to send people there, shill this to companies, you know, try to connect. They were faster. We, we did see uh, quite a lot of people uh, you know, asking how they can accept it. But what was interesting to me is that we saw like quite a few companies that wanted to uh, rebrand BTC Pay Server, you know, uh, translate it, cater it to their audience, which is also possible. BTC Pay Server is under MIT license. So we did see like people trying to, you know, understand how they can fork it and then contribute back. You know, we, we they wanted to translate the interface into Spanish, which we don't have now because we, we have like quite a lot of changes in our interface and we try to, you know, I run those one out before we introduced the, you know, localization for BTC Pay Server and BTC Pay Server being available in as many languages as, as there are. So, yeah, we, we did see increase in Spanish speaking audience, but we also saw like interest from companies wanting to, you know, um, decentralize basically because to me, BTC importance of BTC Pay Server isn't just really like every people running a server. Yeah, that would be ideal. But if they're like, 20 payment companies decentralizing this by using BTC Pay Server or any other software in the, in the, at the end of the day. Just, you know, being able to decentralize this and if there are big businesses that are able to run their own instances, that is good because that decentralizes the power. Imagine what would happen if like uh, entire economy of El Salvador dependent on a single, you know, provider or on a single wallet application. To me, it is always like freedom of choice, having uh, the you know, access to all of these different applications so that you can easier transfer your wealth, you can store it safer, you know, not depending on anybody. And yeah, I guess that's, uh, it's interesting. I will definitely, uh, if I manage to figure out my visa things there, uh, I will be there for adopting Bitcoin. I do intend to stay there for a month or so and mostly just talking to people, seeing how we can onboard them. Uh, how we can make things easier for them. What are their problems, basically? What are their, if they're struggling with, you know, internet? Can we maybe use LN URL pay to allow them to accept Bitcoin payments, but just by scanning QR codes completely offline? Is that something that we can maybe develop for them and things like that, you know? 
So yeah, I guess you know, just being being there will be very interesting case study for me personally and for projects that I'm involved in. I will try to you know pass on experience to people as well. So I hope to meet you there. Uh, fingers crossed. It'd be uh, as you said, it'd be cool to to visit and get a real a real view for what it's actually like and how Bitcoin's changed and changing things. Um, well, yeah, I guess as Ricardo said, we've run about an hour, which is a good time. So um, we'll we'll call it a day, but. Um, Hey, uh, Pavnex, man, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. It's been awesome to uh, to talk to you and uh, get some good insight into you know who you are, what you're about, and BTC Pay Server and and, and the other projects you're involved in, like Bitcoin Smiles. Um, it's much appreciated uh, that you took the time out of your day. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess thanks to uh, Jerry and Ricardo also for joining me, and thank you to everyone out there who's listened too as well. Uh, we appreciate all of you. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, take care, everyone have an awesome morning, afternoon, evening, day, week, year, and, uh, we will see you all again, uh, sometime soon.